Google's big marketing campaign for Stadia is the future is not a box. So I thought it was pretty funny when they sent me a box. Yeah, this is, this is Stadia. It's their founder's pack where it comes with a Chromecast Ultra, a controller. I think I got like the, the dark blue orange one uh, and a three month pass to try out their Stadia Pro, which has Samurai Showdown and Destiny 2 on it. Currently available at 4K streaming. 4K-ish streaming, we'll, we'll say, and I might take a look at Stadia overall as a review, but I think uh, the message has been pretty clear with a lot of people that it's close, but not quite. But one thing that seems to be going around quite a bit is that the Chromecast Ultra is overheating, just in general, when you're streaming with, uh, with Stadia. After a little while, it'll just shut off, because I guess it gets too hot. So I figure we take a look today and see what's going on inside. The Founders Edition box they send it in is very minimalistic. All white around the edges, says Founders Edition on one side, Stadia at the top. On the back, it says one place for all the ways we play. Like I said, just, just so minimalistic, not a lot to this thing. Kind of reminds me of maybe an Apple products box. Then you see the controller right at the top after you take the lid off. We're gonna put that to the side and I think we're gonna tear this one down in a separate video. Underneath the, the holder for the controller is a USB-C to type A cable. That would be for charging the controller. And then right underneath of that, we have a wall wart specifically for that cable to the controller. Underneath of that, we do have our documentation for Stadia, which is like a quick start guide just overall instructions for how to pair up the controller, but that is described when you turn on your system, the Chromecast Ultra. They also included a piece of paper that basically says, thank you, this is the community of players at the core of Stadia. Thanks for being the first to gather around. Also, you get a bunch of stickers, so I guess if you want to represent Stadia for whatever reason, you, you, can, you can do that. And finally, at the bottom of the box, we have our Chromecast Ultra, and then we have our power cable. The power cable is like a micro USB plug-in, pretty standard, but something I really like is that the ethernet cable plugs into the power brick itself, so that it only makes one cable have to run to the Chromecast Ultra, which is nice if you're trying to hide it behind or around a TV. Having just one cable rather than two, like let's say you had to run the ethernet cable up to that Chromecast Ultra, is pretty good. Like that's a really cool way, I think, to figure out how to just w run one cable. And then finally we have our Chromecast Ultra. It's interesting, they have a magnet on the side of the HDMI plug, so that I guess if you want to take it somewhere or store it easily, it'll just kind of grab the bottom of it, kind of attach and fold up for that cable, which is just kind of neat. Otherwise, though, there's not much to this. It has a plug-in for the power and like a, a button on the side. I don't like the glossy plastic on the top. That's really annoying because it scratches pretty easily. I would have preferred the whole thing to be just like a matte finish, like a matte black all the way around, but for whatever reason, that's what they went with. So the whole thing here is apparently Stadia, even though you are just streaming in 4K, is harder on the Chromecast Ultra than streaming YouTube or Netflix in 4K, even HDR and all of that. So because of that, it really is being pushed to the point where it is overheating and shutting off. So I figure we'll open this up. Uh, we can do a temperature probe as close as we can to the chip itself inside and see where we are with our temperatures. And then there was one thing I kind of wanted to try that people are doing to this to try to get it within reason. And we'll see if it actually makes a difference and if it could fix it for you. Well, first thing we have to do is figure out how to take it apart. Good news though. It's not that difficult. After looking around it, there aren't any screws that hold it together. It's all clipped. So all we need is some way to pry it open using a prying tool or a spudger. And after getting it slightly apart, it starts to unclip pretty easily to the point where you can just grab it and start to pop it off. The inside is kind of interesting. When I first popped it off, I realized they had a thermal pad on the side of the glossy plastic that appears to then stick to a heat spreader of some kind underneath of that. And all I could assume at that point is that they are trying to use that glossy plastic top to actually dissipate heat. And that is an odd way to do it, mostly because they probably could have done something else in order to push heat out, but they decided to use the outside of the casing to that degree. And I think that is a massive bottleneck for this. So we'll keep an eye on that as we go forward here. After removing the heat spreader, I realized very quickly they were using a massive, I mean, just a massive amount of thermal compound to make the connection between a tiny little block they have there and then the chipset. I, it's, it's very odd once again to see this. It does, 
I think, scream that they were trying to save as much money as they could to create this. And this isn't necessarily an expensive piece. I think these without Stadia, just on its own, are like 60 or $70. So these aren't built with a ton of quality in mind. What I would have done is probably use a thermal pad of some sort on top of the die for that chip. In fact, after I cleaned off this compound, I realized that it basically broke into a bunch of pieces and I wouldn't be able to use it again. It just, it wasn't high quality stuff. So I ended up cutting a thermal pad to form and use that when I put it back together instead. Then I spent some time trying to figure out a good spot to put the temperature probe uh, as close as I could to the die within reason. I'm aware this isn't gonna give me the exact temperature of the chip, but I'm trying to get what I can out of it. If the Chromecast would at least tell us what the die's temperature was, then it would be a lot easier to do this. After that, I put it back together. It clipped together very well with the cable coming out of the side. No issues there really. Since it's clipped together, the cable was able to sneak through the side and everything went together pretty well, I would say. And I wanted to go ahead and get a baseline reading on the temperature right around 22 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll switch back and forth between Celsius and Fahrenheit, but for the most part, I'm gonna stick to Celsius just because that's what we pretty much use in the PC world. And for anyone curious, here's the chip that's inside the Chromecast Ultra. I believe it's a Marvel Armada 1500 variant. Uh, it looks to be a quad core A53 CPU. However, if anyone wants to double check and just let me know exactly what it would be down in the comments, that'd be great. All right, so now it's time to test this thing. Now, I know it's not gonna be like perfect, accurate, exact results when it comes to temperature readings. What I'm more trying to figure out here is that you can create a temperature difference with the most common thing people do online now with the Chromecast Ultra in an attempt to fix it. So that's most of what I'm looking at there, not necessarily the exact temperature of the die. That's something that's kind of difficult with the tools that I have available to me to figure out. So I decided to use Final Fantasy 15. I had picked it up uh, during my uh, kind of checking it out and experiences with it to try something other than Destiny 2 and Samurai Showdown. I wanted to try something that, uh, that apparently has exclusive content to it, which is Final Fantasy 15. Strange, yes, but I went ahead and fired up Final Fantasy 15 and started to play to get us to a, a nice baseline temperature with the Chromecast Ultra just stock pretty much. Now, the one thing, again, I'll say, I kind of wish I was able to save the clay compound junk that they had used rather than use the thermal pad that I have on there now because I feel that might be a bit of an upgrade for heat transfer. So that might have also hurt some of the results. In fact, it's possible that changing out that junk for a thermal pad might actually help the heat transfer enough to keep the Chromecast Ultra on on its own. Anyway, as soon as I turned on the Chromecast Ultra and it loaded up the stream, it immediately jumped to around 54 degrees Celsius. And from there, it was kind of a slow climb. When I hear people say that uh, it usually takes like an hour or two to overheat, it is because it does take quite a while to get up to a certain temperature, but it does climb quite a bit. In fact, after about 30 minutes, it did climb and kind of roof at just over 66 degrees Celsius. I think at one point I saw like 66 and a half. I also put a probe, a temperature probe on the outside of the Chromecast Ultra because I realized it was getting hot on the outside and I figured we'd measure that temperature as well. And that peaked just over 54 degrees Celsius. So for what this chip is and the kind of power it's drawing, that is pretty toasty for just technically streaming. So at this point, it was time to try the one method that I see everyone talk about for the Chromecast Ultra in the community trying to keep it from overheating and that was to attach literal heat sinks to the outside of it seriously people are just attaching heat sinks to the outside of it and I realize this is probably a method that everyone can do you could do all kinds of stuff to it you could change out the casing you cut holes in it and you all put fans on it but most people who want a quick fix aren't going to do that. So that's why I opted just to start sticking heat sinks to it. And what I started to do was uh, grab those Raspberry Pi heat sinks, the small ones with kind of the thermal tape on the bottom that helped transfer heat. And I just started sticking them to it. So I started with one and believe it or not, that dropped the temperature of this thing by about two degrees Celsius, like immediately. I did let it cool down and let it get back up to, up to temperature. It takes about 30 minutes or so for me to get it there with Final Fantasy 15, but it did roof at about 64 degrees Celsius, which was an improvement. So I thought, let's just start sticking a bunch of heat sinks to it. And I did this in real time while it was on with the temperature up. I started sticking heat sink after heat sink to it, and the temperature continued to fall. I was 
it was it was very interesting to see. Now the heat sinks did heat up quite a bit to the point where they were pretty hot to the touch on the outside. So that's something to keep in mind. It'll be kind of toasty there. But the system itself was pretty much a 62 degrees Celsius completely. That was the roof. I would actually see it drop down to almost 60 degrees at times. And after even leaving it on for about two hours hours in the fields in Final Fantasy 15, it never went above that 62-ish degree Celsius. It got like 62.2 or 0.3, but a pretty good drop from 66 by just sticking heat sinks to the outside of it. Also, for anyone who streams 4K content, I did see some people saying that theirs would also overheat just streaming 4K stuff. I went ahead and just loaded up some very nice scenery uh, 4K uh, uh, drone shots that people upload to YouTube, which because they look really, really nice on the TV, but they are 4K, and I let that play for a while, and I couldn't get it above 50, uh, 59 degrees Celsius. It rested right around 58 and a half doing that, once again, just from sticking heat sinks to the outside of it. Now, that's as far as I took it. I'm sure I could have done crazier things, like I could have, like I said, cut out holes in it, I could have put fans on it. There's a lot of things I could do to this, but really, at the end of the day, looking at this, this is one of Stadia's, I think, their biggest mistake for this whole setup is to ship a product that doesn't actually appear to be up to the task for streaming Stadia. I think this this Chromecast Ultra was kind of thrown in there because they realized they could at least get it to work out of the box, but I am concerned with the longevity of this device and seeing so many people on their subreddit and even on Twitter say that theirs is shutting off and this is a common issue that's been going back for generations of the Chromecast, I do question why they didn't just create their own little Raspberry Pi box that, yeah, maybe it has active cooling or maybe it just has a larger heatsink in it, similar to what's like what we use with something like the uh, the PlayStation One uh, Classic. Those just have large pieces of like aluminum there to cool it. Like that's that's it. I don't know why they went this method, this route, I should say, with the Chromecast Ultra. It's very odd. The only thing I can think of is that it was there. They needed it out. And a lot of Stadia does feel rushed. This is just something else on top of it. It's a big mistake, though, for Stadia because that's the only way to get 4K right now, anyway, out of it. And to be honest, the Chromecast Ultra is not really up to the task with the kind of temperatures that it's pushing right now. But let me know what you guys think about this down below. It's just a fun experiment to see if literally sticking heat sinks to it. You could go crazier, by the way. You could put bigger heat sinks on it. You could put more on it. Just know that the Chromecast Ultra is actively using that top glossy part to try to dissipate heat, pushing it out and using air to hopefully cool it. But hey, stick enough heat sinks on the outside or maybe even put a box fan on it and you got you really got something there. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.